Next up is a real fun one. So uh, just keeping it simple, I'm gonna go in here to the tool palette, grab a Z-sphere, drag that onto my canvas, go into edit mode, and this is Z-sphere basic functionality. Um, just so you can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna change this to the skin shader four. And this is a Z-sphere. Again, just like anything else, if you wanna know more deep divey stuff, just type in Z-sphere in my YouTube channel, all sorts of Z-sphere stuff you can check out. But in this instance, just basic functionality is we have a Z-sphere in our scene. Uh, we have draw, move, scale, and rotate. So we have Q, W, E, and R for those hotkeys. So if I hit the Q, uh, we're in draw mode. So if I click and drag on our Z-sphere here, it's gonna make a new Z-sphere. So I can hit W and I can move this up. Then I can hit Q again. And we can draw a new Z-sphere off of this one. Hit W, go over here. And in fact, you can hit uh, Q, draw a new Z-sphere. If you hold on Shift, it'll snap to the previous Z-sphere size. So very quickly, you can just keep these all the same size. If you you know really move this down and you wanna add some more links in here, some more joints, hit Q, just go through here and tap, and then hit W, and you can go through here and you can move this stuff around. So you can have very precise placement. This is great for like shoelaces and stuff like that, where it's like you don't wanna pull around geometry or mess around too much with like insert curve brushes, because uh, they can be a little bit hard to manipulate. This, this you can actually go through here and again, you know, we can loop this back around and hit Q and W. You have all the control in the world to kind of dictate where these Z-spheres are going to be in space. And you can go, yeah, I want this to loop uh, over on this side. I need a little more resolution. So very quickly go through here and just make whatever shape you'd like. If you want these to overlap, no problem. And in fact, if you need, you know, move, scale, and rotate. So E is scale. You can scale down the hierarchy chain by clicking a bone or the individual joint itself. And then the same thing with rotate. You can rotate down the hierarchy or the individual bone. Same thing with move. You can move an individual individual joint or down the hierarchy chain by clicking the bone and then using the move brush. So now we have a bunch of Z-sphere chains all in a row. What if I wanna pass a curve through these? Like I was talking about earlier, um, instead of using an IMM curve and trying to pull around that curve, we've already got a path for it to follow. Let's have it follow that. So let's go in here to the stroke menu Stock it over here on the side. Go down here to Curves Helper. And then the cool one I want to talk about first is a scale Z-spheres to draw size. So you see these are all kind of different sizes in here. So what I can do is tap S and change my draw size here, bigger or smaller, or go up here to my draw size. And now if I want them all to be this size, I can go over here and say scale Z-spheres to draw size. Boom, they're all scaled. Now the next thing I want to do in order again to get a curve to follow all these Z-spheres is say copy Z-sphere chain. It's gonna copy those into memory. And then you've got a couple options down here. If you click Create Curve and Append New, you can see I don't have anything else in this scene. It's just a Z-sphere. So if I Create Curve and Append New, it's going to append a default unit cube and then add a curve to it. The reason it does that, if I turn off the Z-sphere eyeball here, um, is because a curve can't just live by itself. It has to be with a subtool that is an object or a piece of geometry. If you want to control that more, you can say, let's delete that out of here. So we can go back to the Z-sphere, copy Z-sphere chain. I'm going to append a PolyMesh 3D. Take that PolyMesh 3D, let's turn uh, the Z-sphere back on. I'm just going to scale this down, move it anywhere in your scene, doesn't really matter. And that's going to be our geo that catches our Z-sphere chain. So again, copy Z-sphere chain, I'm going to turn off append new this time, just hit create curve with our poly mesh selected and now our curve is gonna be associated with that poly mesh. So now you can see I have a curve going through the Z-sphere chain. So let's go ahead and turn off that Z-sphere and now you can apply geometry to this. So just like any other IMM brush, you can go to B, I, IMM curve for example. You can either go up here and select something or you can hit M as in Michael Pavlovich. Let's say grab the necklace link and if you just tap that curve is gonna update that necklace. If you go in here and change your draw size and tap, it's gonna update that on the fly. Now you're gonna notice, if I go back here, uh, you might have some harsh angles in here. So one thing you can do is you can go up here, uh, again, we're in our stroke menu. Underneath curve functions here, you got a couple options. You have delete, which is actually gonna be the, do the same thing as delete curve, snapshot and smooth. If I hover over these, you're gonna see the hotkey for that is six. So if I hit six on my keyboard or just hit that smooth, that's gonna smooth your curve out. So if you do need to have a little bit of a smoother transaction between those points, that's the one you wanna use. And you can swap these out on the fly as well. You can go here to BI brush insert, 
say army curve, hit M, go in here to bike chain, update this, make the draw size a little bit bigger, and there you go. You have that update that curve with the bike chain. Now once you're done with this, you can either just tap away from the curve on the object and I'll delete the curve, or you can go through here and you can just say delete curve or curve functions, delete curve. Now, before you delete the curve, there's a few other things you can do with it. If you notice as you hover over, here's where your cursor is red, you can change the draw size. And as you hover over the curve, it's gonna turn blue. If you hold down control, you can actually twist around that. So as long as that cursor is blue and you hold down control, you can twist. You can also hold down shift and smooth, and that'll like smooth out the line. And there's also a couple options in here. You can go in here to underneath curve. You can lock start and lock end. So now you can actually use the blue cursor to kind of pull these around and it'll lock uh, the start and the end there. You can go in here to elastic and as you move this around, it's going to actually add more links to the beginning or the end curve. So here you can just add more stuff through here or pull in here and add more links that way. Now you can also use liquid and you can actually pull across here and start deleting portions of your curve as well. So a lot of cool stuff in there. Now, one more example. We've already talked about this when you were talking about the hard surface thick skin. But I did use Curves Helper on this. If you turn all the way to the back here, you see there's a bunch of basically Z-sphere chains. So if I alt tap here and we look at the Z-sphere and hold down shift and turn off everything except for the Z-sphere chain, you're gonna notice it's not just a simple root to tip Z-sphere chain. I actually had X symmetry turned on. Then I drew out Z-spheres in this direction and I also uh, drew a Z-sphere off of that chain. So again, if I hit Q and then just pull off a little bit and then pull off again and then hit W, you can see you can take branches off of your Z-sphere chain. And what that's going to do is, if I go back over here to my curves helper, and I say copy the z-sphere chain into memory, uh, create a new curve. I'm going to go ahead and say append new, so I don't have to worry about geometry. So I'll go ahead and create me a new curve, and that geometry is down here. So now I have this curve available to me. Again, if I want to smooth that out, I can go up here and I can say, and if I want to apply a mesh to this chain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to B, instead of doing like BI brush insert curve, I'm going to do BC, and you're going to notice it's a curve tube in here. So I choose curve tube. I can now touch any of these curves and you're gonna see again, it's kind of has little kinks in that curve. Let's undo that. Let's go back in here. We can hit smooth or again, six on your keyboard. We'll smooth those out. So now when I tap here, it's gonna put a tube along here. Now the reason I choose the curve tube is you're gonna see it's ignoring this branch over here and I'm using that on purpose. If you were to go through here and say like brush curve multi-tube, it's gonna do all of them the same size or if I go in here to like BI brush insert curve, and then just grab like the necklace, they're all gonna be the same size and it's all gonna to apply to the branches as well. However, brush curve tube, I can click this top one here and I can make my draw size thicker. So I can make this, this main one maybe a little bit thick and then this branch over here, I can make it a little bit smaller. However, when I go in here and tap, it's going to just keep this one. So I wanna, I wanna keep them both, right? So again, if I just undo that, so we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger and to keep that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and see where the snapshot is the hotkey for that is five so you can hit snapshot and that's going to store that geometry and then I can make this a little smaller boom and now I've added two separately sized ones again you can tap off the mesh if you can't if you can't find a good place to tap away from the mesh again just go in here and say delete curve now remember when you've made geometry uh, you can control drag to unmask and this geometry is still associated with this turn on polyframe, still associated with this cube. So what I would do is just hold down control shift. Um, you can you can grab all of this if you want and then control shift drag to invert and then geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Uh, if I hold down control shift and tap, that'll bring it back. If it's, it's kind of hard to grab, just grab a little piece of it and then do control shift A for visibility grow all, control shift drag to invert that visibility and then again, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And now we just have these tubes. If I want the same tubes, if I turn on, let's uh, hold down shift and turn everything else back on with the eyeball. And you know, it will turn off that Z spheres so you can see a little bit better what's going on. So we have tubes over here and no tubes over here. If I go into solo mode or you know what, let's go into transparency mode. And I wanted the same on the other side. Very quickly, I can just go in here to geometry, 
modify topology and do a mirror and weld across the X. If the tube happens to be on the other side, just go down here to deformation, mirror across the X first, and then do a mirror and weld. Uh, but in this case, I just want to mirror and weld this side to that side.